Good work. All right. Uh, I'd just like to say we're a hack assistance team. We're here to present today on Hadoop Apache's open source implementation. Apache's open source implementation of Google's MapReduce framework. Uh, just a few quick greets. Uh, shout out to Dark Tangent for making DEF CON possible for all of us. Uh, Nikita for project selection and getting us up here on stage so we can present to all of you. And last but not least, Steve Arkham. So let's get into it. Uh, we're going to give you a brief overview of clouds, you know, definitions of new clouds, things that they do, things of that nature. Uh, the map reduce walkthrough. Uh, we're going to talk about what a mapper is, what a reducer is, what they're doing, how we're utilizing them. Uh, a little bit about Hadoop's backend infrastructure, like the master nodes, uh, job tracker, distributed cache, things of that nature. Uh, the streaming interface, standard input output, and how things you create in Hadoop framework are portable to other languages. Uh, HDFS, which is the file system that Hadoop uses, and HBase, which is the database they use. Uh, then we're going to talk a little bit about the Netflix prize and the sample code that our has generated for it. And that will give you a chance to see some code examples and things where we've utilized Hadoop framework to generate some data. And then last but not least, we have a few other special select projects just for you guys today at DEF CON to check out. So right now I'm going to hand it over to Joey Kalka and Ryan Anguiano. big piles of other people's hardware. Uh, there's some element of virtualization built into them. They're scalable, you can drop nodes in and out, it's not going to affect how the cloud runs. Um, you've got a high level API, so uh, with Hadoop we really don't have to deal with a lot of moving data around or dealing with networking or anything like that. You just write a map or reducer, the framework takes care of all the rest of the stuff for you. And uh, Hadoop really utilizes core screen data um, to process in parallel. So how much data are we talking about? Well, Wayback Machine uses about, has about two petabytes of data total, and they're adding about 20 petabytes a month. Google processes 20 petabytes a day. What would you do if someone came to you with 20 petabytes and asked you to get information out of it? That's just a massive amount of information. Um, a whole bunch of uh, CERN's Large Hadron Collider, 15 petabytes a year when it's fully, when it's up and running. So, large amounts of data that you need to be able to sit through and analyze. All right, so a lot of the work we did was on the Saguaro cluster at ASU. Um, there was 45, 60 processor cores. Um, we got a little stripped off portion of that. We had 50 hardware nodes. Each node uh, was two processors that were each quad cores. So we had eight cores per node. Um, when we go into our mappers, you create one mapper per processor. So we had 50 hardware nodes, but we would create 100 mapper nodes. You'd run two mappers at the same time on each hardware node. So for the whole rest of the speech, when we refer to nodes, it's processors. Um, and then there's just a few other stats on the rest of the cluster. Um, now, Google's MapReduce. In 2004, Google released an abstract, uh, basically outlining their map, and they had, a large, they had a huge problem processing and generating large data sets. So they, they uh, invented MapReduce to be able to solve this. And many real-world tasks are expressible in this model. Um, it's been automatically paralyzed for a large cluster of commodity machines. And here's basically um, the workflow of MapReduce. You get your input data, you run it through your mapper. The mapper outputs some intermediate, intermediate key value pairs, which gets passed to the reducer, and the reducer out your output. We'll talk about this in a second. Easy to, it's really easy to utilize a large distributed system without any experience. You don't have to mess with the network, or you don't have to do anything. You just got to write your mapper and your reducer. It's highly scalable. It's uh, meant to scale down to a couple gigabytes of data up to a couple terabytes. So any data you want to throw in it, it'll be able to handle it. And it's so useful that Google runs about a thousand map reduce jobs a day. Now here's Hadoop. Hadoop is uh, Apache's project, Apache Project's open source implementation of MapReduce. It's Java based, and right now it's not that stable. It's what's it, 0.20? Yeah, the latest version is 0.20. Our cloud that we compute on is running 0.19. So right now, um, it's been demonstrated on a cluster of 2,000 nodes, but for production, uh, they're aiming for a target of 10,000 node clusters. 
And if you need, want to find more information about that, you can check out the website right there. And um, so here's a mapper. It's basically a special function that applies function f to each element in the data. So here's the algebraic expression. Map of f, or map, map function, basically applied to every single piece of the data. And as you can see in the graphic right here, it basically just takes the function and applies it to every single piece of data. The input, uh, you basically take your input in your mapper and you input uh, values to, you map all your values to a key. And map, the map function is called one time for each input line. And it outputs one key value pair as a hash map to the reducer. All right, so after you get the key value hash map from your mapper, there's a whole intermediate phase that you don't really interface with. It's copied and sorted because map runs in parallel across a bunch of nodes. So we're running 100 mappers at a time. All that data is then copied to a single reduce node because reduce happens in serial. Um, after it's copied, it's then sorted. Um, okay, so sorted by the key. Uh, everything with a common key in the hash map it takes all the values from it, dumps them into an array, and passes into the reducer the key, and then an array of all of the values that had the common key coming out of map. All right, so the reducer then um, gets, you have your function, you have x, which is an initial value, and then the rest of the array list. Um, it sets an accumulator, it computes f for the first initial value, and then it applies f to every element in the list plus the accumulated value. And then your result, your final output, is what you output from your reducer. So here's what it would look like algebraically. You apply f of x. Um, x is your initial value. And then you have a, b, and c. Here's a picture of what it looks like. So you can see the block on the left, that's your initial value. And then it does it recursively, uh, keeping the accumulated values. So your input to the reducer is the output key value hash map from the copy and sort after your mapper. Um, f of x is performed on every x with a common key. And then your output from your reducer is another hash map, and that's what you get as your text output. All right, so the map reduce framework, um, given this model map, you can take your whole input data set, break it up into a bunch of pieces, run it all in parallel, bring it back together for reduce. Um, the order of application and function does not matter in the mapper because you're doing it in parallel and breaking it up. You don't have to worry about doing things out of order. Um, reduce is executed in serial on a single node because you're computing across the entire data set, whereas map is just computing on pieces of the entire data set. Um, and Hadoop takes care of all that huge list of stuff at the bottom, so you don't have to worry about any of that stuff, which is really nice. All right, here's a picture of uh, what the workflow would look like. You start with your data source, you break it up, you do a whole map, um, then you bring it all back together. Uh, this picture is kind of misleading because there are three reducers there. In reality, there's only one serial reducer. 